Since literally before the Galaxy Z Fold 7 was announced, there has been a ton of discussion about battery life on this device. Now, while I have found it to be absolutely fine, a lot of people do want to know how you can get more out of this 4400 milliamp hour battery. So in this video, that is exactly what we're going to talk about. Using my Z Fold 7, I'm going to go over my top tips to get more battery out of your Galaxy Z Fold 7. And the first one, the place I'm going to start, the thing that makes the biggest difference for me is something called light processing mode. So what we're gonna do is jump into our settings and you would think that you're gonna go to the battery section for this, but you're not. You're actually going to go down to device care. And right here, you'll see performance profile. Changing this to light mode, it says, prioritizes battery life and cooling efficiency over processing speed. This setting doesn't apply to games. That's a big thing. A lot of people think, well, if I do that, then I try to play a game, it's not going to run well. It doesn't apply to games. It's just for your normal use. And all this does is just basically keep your processor from firing quite as hard as it normally would. And here's the cool thing about this. You are never going to notice a difference in terms of performance of your device. When you're just doing your normal day-to-day -day stuff, I cannot tell a difference at all, but I promise I can tell a difference when it comes to battery life. The other day I was actually doing some benchmarking on this phone, so I turned off light processing mode just to be safe, forgot to turn it back on. A couple days go by and I'm thinking, why is my battery draining so fast? And then I remembered, forgot to turn the setting back on. So turn that on, you're gonna get more battery. In that same device care section, look for an option called memory right here, and it's gonna do some checking, some scanning very quickly. And then you can see this option on here, RAM Plus. By default, that's turned on and it's set to eight gigabytes. Now this is a complicated one, but I'm gonna advise that you turn it off to save battery. To explain why, we need to look at an article. Samsung's RAM Plus feature doesn't work the way that you think. This is on Sam Mobile. The text on the actual setting itself is apparently misleading. It says RAM Plus uses your phone's storage space to provide virtual memory, like a swap file. And apparently that's not how it works. If you scroll down here, they say that's simply wrong. In short, RAM Plus is based on a technology called ZRAM. What is ZRAM? It's a kernel module that creates a block of system RAM where data can be stored at a higher compression rate. So basically what this is doing is it's not using internal storage as RAM. It's taking a little bit of your RAM and then compressing it at a two to one ratio. So if you are using the eight gigabyte version of this, I guess that means it would take four gigs of your RAM and compress it at a two to one ratio to make it be eight gigs of RAM. Now, either way, regardless if it's ZRAM or if it's a swap file, that's going to use more processing power when that bit of RAM is being used. The compression is gonna take processing power, and of course, just using storage instead of RAM is going to use more power. So unless you just really think you need more than 12 gigabytes of RAM, which, you probably don't. I multitask all the time and I do not notice any difference with this turned off. Turn it off and save some battery. This next one is a little bit more advanced, but I think that it could be very, very useful. You need to have developer options enabled. So to do that, you're going to click on about phone. Then you're going to click on software information and then click on build number a bunch of times. Once you've done that, go into developer options and we're going to scroll down to running services. And what this is going to show you is literally what's running right now on your phone. And if there's something in here that you're like, meta services, I don't use Facebook stuff at all. Well, you know what I would advise you do? Go into your apps list and settings and start uninstalling or disabling things. Look for meta services and disable that. I use KDE Connect to sync my clipboard between my computer and my phone. If I'm not using that, that's gonna tell me, hey, that's running all the time. Uninstall that application. M3 Expressive Widgets is running right now. And guess what? I installed that the other day and I'm not using it. So I'm going to uninstall that. Let's go into my apps. M3 Expressive Widgets. And we're going to go ahead and uninstall that because it was just running despite the fact that I wasn't using it. You can find stuff like that through that method. And there's meta services I talked about earlier. Let's just disable that. There are ways you can uninstall it, but disabling it will have a similar effect. You just won't get all your storage back. What you're seeing right now is my always on display. And as you can see, you can see my wallpaper. It's dim, but it is there. And unfortunately, even though I really like that feature, it does use a lot of battery. If you go into lock screen and AOD, 
underneath always on display, there is an option to show lock screen wallpaper. I would advise turning that off. You can see that mine's turned on and I'll show you why that is here in a later section of kind of a, a mid step that you can do to kind of have that at times, but not use it too much. It does seem to use a decent amount of battery, which I think is obvious. You can go the extra step and just turn AOD off, period. So when your phone is off, the screen is just off. Now this next one is obvious, but we're gonna kind of dig a little bit deeper. If we go into our battery section, you'll see something called power saving. If you click on that, you're gonna see exactly what power saving mode is going to do. And you can actually piecemeal this, which is really, really cool. So if I turn this on, you can limit your CPU speed all the way down to 70%. This is like light processing mode, but even more aggressive. And you're probably not really gonna notice this either. Turn off always on display, just mention that. Decrease brightness by 10%. Not a big fan of that, but you can do it. Set motion smoothness to standard. So what does that mean? That means you're actually gonna change your refresh rate from 120 down to 60. You can turn on dark mode, set screen timeout to 30 seconds. So this is like a nuclear option, right? Turn this on and all of that stuff is going to happen. But you can also go in and individually tweak these settings. So I've already talked about how you can turn on always on display, but you can also do this motion smoothness thing on your own as well. And of course, darkness and screen timeout as well. If you jump into your settings, you'll see motion smoothness. Just change this to standard. If you're not one of those people who really like cares about or perceives the smoothness of a high refresh rate screen, you can turn that to standard and that's definitely going to save some battery life. The advantage of doing these settings on your own is that you might not like this bit here. Background network usage, syncing, and location checking will be limited and Super HDR won't be available. So if you don't want your background syncing to be impacted, I would recommend going and finding each of these settings and doing those yourself. Now this next one is all about automation. If we jump into modes and routines, there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do here. So let's go down to this discover tab. And if you scroll down, Samsung has already given us several battery things here. And I think this will give a good example of exactly what I'm talking about. So this one says save battery. So what does this do? If you click on it, what it says is if you are not charging and your battery is below 5%, it's going to turn that power saving mode on automatically. Now, what's really cool about modes and routines is that you're not just restricted to the ones that Samsung has made here for you. If you go over to routines, you see this one here, auto rotate when open. I know you're probably thinking, how is that relevant to the battery life? But stick with me. This is one I've made. When my device is fully open, auto rotate is turned on, absolutely. But also this happens, always on display on and then auto. And I have show lock screen wallpaper turned on. So let me show you how this actually works, or I guess what it does. So my device is open, and as you can see, the wallpaper is being shown. If I close it, there's my wallpaper, and then it turns itself off. It switches to the normal AOD that doesn't show the wallpaper. And the reason I do this is because if my phone is open, and locked, more than likely it's sitting on a charging stand or something like that, so I'm not really worried about the battery life. If it's closed, I probably set it on a table, and I don't really want that wallpaper showing all the time in that instance. The beauty of this is that you can do so many things. Let's say that you don't really care about a high refresh rate screen when you're on your cover display. You're just using it to quickly text and things like that. But when you open it, you wanna have that full high refresh rate. You can do that. Click on your little plus button up here. What will trigger this routine? Click on that and then I think it's under folding status. Yeah, click on that and do uh, completely closed. And then what will happen? What will happen when it is completely closed, you can click on that, type in motion, motion smoothness cover screen, and you can put that onto standard, save it. You're gonna wanna name it, so let's just name it cover refresh. You can set a color and an icon to help you sort of understand what you're looking at. And now that is just there. Whenever I close my device, it's gonna turn on, it's gonna lower that refresh rate. Whenever I open it back up, it's going to increase the refresh rate and it's all gonna happen automatically. You could do the same thing with this and change the then to being power saving mode. Let's say when it's open, you're actively using it. You don't need background sync happening. So you can have that 
turned on. And again, they have more examples here. Save battery at night. When you're sleeping and you're not charging, turn on power saving mode. So you forgot to plug your phone in overnight, let's say, or maybe there's no charger around. I'm going to save this. Let's just go ahead and have that there. That's really useful. So guys, I think those are the biggest battery saving tips for me, the ones that have made the biggest difference. I could talk about other things like using dark mode and using dark wallpapers because that uses less power on these displays. But I think by now, most of us have probably heard all those things. So I want wanted to lean into some things that maybe you hadn't thought about, a few things that maybe you didn't know about. Hopefully that is the case. If you have a tip that's really worked well for you, drop that in the comments down below to help everybody else out. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.